Hi, I'm Sarah from SKL Training. If you're doing the Certificate in Assessing Vocational Achievement and you're ready to do your practical element, this video is for you. This morning, I'm assessing Holly on her Level 3 Award in Education and Training. She's doing the No Homework version, so one of the assessments is a presentation. We're going to do that live this morning, so actually, I've got no idea if she's going to pass or not. We're going to find out at the same time. I'm going to talk you through the process. The first thing I'm going to do with Holly is explain to her what's going to happen in the assessment today. And that's what you will need to do with your students. You'll need to tell them what they need to expect from the day. Okay, good morning, Holly. Good morning. We're here today to do one of your assessments, which is a presentation. Yeah. So you've prepared for that during the week. Yeah. How are you feeling about it? I'm fine. I'm all right. <laughs> good. I actually am. <laughs> good, good. So the things that we're looking for this morning we're looking for you to talk to me about why is it important to identify and meet individual learner needs. Yeah. How can you maintain a safe and supportive learning environment? Yeah. Why is it important to promote appropriate behaviour and respect? Yeah. The features of inclusive teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. Why it's important to provide learners with opportunity to develop their maths, English and IT skills? Yeah. How you can engage and motivate learners? Yeah. And how you can establish ground rules? Yeah, of course. So it's working towards assessment five. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch your presentation and then I'm going to make an assessment decision and we're going to do that together. So we're okay. going to go through exactly <laughs> the same process. Oh. Um, so I'm expecting your presentation to be somewhere around 10 to 15 minutes, as okay. you know. Yeah. And you've been preparing for it during the week, so that's great. Do you need anything from me before we start? Do you have any additional requirements? No, thank you. Okay. I'm we're, all right. <laughs> that's, that's good. I've that's had good. a coffee. I'm fine. <laughs> We have checked as well. Yeah, we've so checked. We're in a quiet room. You can see we're in a quiet room. There's nobody else around. It is just you and me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give you your assessment decision when it's just you and me as well. Okay. Um, let me just make sure I've covered everything. I'm not using any holistic assessment opportunities today because I haven't seen you teach before. So this is this is the one and only assessment. We're going to do the assessment. I might ask you some additional questions afterwards if, no if you haven't learned everything. But um, let's see. It is a presentation. Okay, I think, are you happy to go? Yeah, I'm happy. Great. Yeah. Hi everyone. I'm, my name's Holly and today I'm doing my presentation for Level 3 AET. I'm going to start with the first question and that is, why is it important to identify <laughs> and meet individual needs. <clears throat> it is important to be able to identify and meet individual needs as everyone is different. Not only do people have a different learning need, but also people may need a different support. It's also important that you as a teacher are able to, to identify if the course they are on is the right one for them. Often there are, often there are cases Often there are cases where pupils have attended courses and been on them and realise the outcome is not the best for them for what they wanted to achieve. This is why I feel a good way to overcome this would be to do a pre-assessment paper of why the person is on this course, what they want to achieve from the course, and that way you are able to identify if the course you are teaching is the right course for them. There are often students who are on the course as part of a work requirement in which you would have a different approach with as they need to be there, but they are as important as anyone else there that has also chosen to be on it. If you feel your course is not right for a student, you could refer them to someone that, it, someone that could help them and go that extra mile as where, what you tell your student from now could have an impact on them or where you, in which direction you send them. Identifying your student needs for write, reading, writing, sight or sound is also another pre-assessment form I will do. For example, if someone had poor hearing, you could move, then move them to the front of the class. If someone was long or short-sighted, you could move them to the front or a bit further away. If someone was to struggle with reading and writing, you could make sure you have PowerPoint presentations or do more verbal and oral work with that particular student. This way you are not singling anyone out and there is no stereotyping and always the quality in the classroom. There are also things you need to know from the pre-assessment such as has that person got dyslexia, do they suffer with ADHD, so you can offer the right support and learning for them. It's important someone doesn't quit and commits to your course 
Some people often with these types of difficulties have, like, have a low confidence, get stressed out easily, and it's important you praise them and do everything you possibly can before that person quits. So I'm gonna move on to question two now. Sorry, just bear with me, my laptop's a little bit slow-mo. So question two, what ways can you maintain an a safe and so what sorry what ways can you maintain a safe and supportive learning environment when we are at work school or college we often hide and do not speak out about things that happen within our households and personal lives so in order to maintain support as a teacher i will look out for things to make sure my students are safe for example if my student came in repeatedly with new bruises each week that i could visibly see in different places I would pull them to the side after class and have a chat with them about what is going on and tell them that I am concerned. Often people have accidents or fall, for, for, to, or fall over, get hit by a door, but if you're seeing a repeat pattern, then you need to have a chat with your student. In this case, I would not personally be able to help, but I will refer my students to the police or domestic violence um, team. There are also problems like childcare, children being sick, financial issues. Has your student eaten today? What if they didn't have the money to all the time? I wouldn't ever directly ask any of my students if or why they have no time to eat or drink. Instead, I'll provide tea, coffee, water and biscuits to make sure. If a person hasn't eaten, they often will begin to lack concentration. So it's important they are getting the very most they can out of your course. But it's also important to, to, for everyone to feel warm and ready to start a day of learning. And this is physiological support. Physiological support can aid in your student feeling safe. And safety is important, as not all learners have had a positive time in education. If a student was bullied at school, they may have subconscious fear. Protecting them from, protecting them from any form of bullying is a security for some people. I will let my students know that it is a non-bullying or discriminating zone. Friendship, trust and acceptance are all important within the classroom as people need to feel like they belong there. How nice would it be if you lacked love at home and you can be that person to pay attention to your student? Positive feedback, praise and encouragement are all important, especially for self-esteem. Sorry. <laughs> Please to take a breather. <laughs> Self-esteem is important. You could give your students a practical task individually now and then throughout the duration of the course and especially if you feel that person lacks confidence in any way. For example, writing or reading, you could make sure that when they are doing something practical, you say empowering comments to praise and guide them. This will help a student to believe in themselves and having self-actualization that they have what it takes to do what they want to achieve. For, it's, for someone, this can mean writing a good piece of theory and for somebody else, it could mean spelling a word correctly. Question three <laughs> is describe features of inclusive teaching and learning. So I will always ensure that all students' learning needs and preferences are met, which includes their background, their learning styles and their abilities. As part of planning for all my lessons, I will email or post out a pre-learning assessment quiz, which is known as a VART questionnaire. This will tell me if my students are visual, auditory, read, write or kinesthetic learners, so that I can then adapt to customer needs and re recognise individual learner differences. I can then mix up teaching styles throughout the lesson to fulfil all student potentials. For visual learners, I can offer videos of the important parts of the lesson that they will need to take with them in the industry to always look back on. I will offer lectures and voice recordings for my auditory learners and give them a chance to record me if they want to. A manual to keep for my read and write learners and for my kinesthetic learners, I can actually take videos of them doing their practical work and me and demonstrations throughout the day. And then they can go back on that later on. Um, and they always have it to watch in the future. Question four. 
question four. Explain why it is important to provide opportunities for, oh, sorry, <laughs> for learners to develop maths, English and IT skills. So to keep up to date with functional skills, I will incorporate, um, ugh, sorry, I will incorporate maths, English and IT into my learning session. Often we are doing this anyway and we don't even realise. For example, if I'm writing an email to send someone a breakdown of the value of something by using my phone, iPad or laptop, I'm already doing all three. Breaking down the value and working out costs is maths. Using a piece of technology is IT and via email is using writing to communicate, which is using English. These three functional skills will definitely be important for my students in the future, as in aesthetics, we use units when drawing up and injecting a client's Botox treatment. So students will know how to do this when they leave. For example, we use 1.25 of Torback with every vial of Azalur, and we spread the units across the forehead, the frown line, the crow's feet, in units of 2.5, fives and tens. This is using maths for taking measurements. They will need to write that down on a consultation treatment plan, which will be different for every single client that they ever have. And that's now done by app or in paper form. This is extremely important for everyone going into the industry. And I will teach my students how to use paper and the technology version so they are aware of how to do both an English and IT style consultation form. I will cover maths when speaking about units for Botox and meals for dermal filler. Question five. So explain why it is important to promote appropriate behavior and respect. In the dictionary, the definition of respect is having regards for someone's feelings, rights and wishes. I have decided that I will have this written on my board at the start of when every new course begins and when doing our icebreakers as a class to introduce ourselves of what our name is, where we come from, I will also ask them to give me one example of what they think respect is. Then we will discuss as a class our class rules that we all pick together that we are going to stick to within our class. I will mention it's a non-bullying, non-racist and non-violent zone and I will discuss not allowing poor behaviour that distracts others whilst learning. All of this is important as everyone has paid money for the course and every student must feel like they've got the absolute most out of every single day before they leave and go home. Question six. <laughs> so sum summarise ways to establish some ground rules. So, Setting rules within a classroom is important so everyone knows exactly where they stand. Although these will differ depending on the age of your student, when teaching adults, you will have negotiable rules and non-negotiable rules. Non-negotiable rules will not always be obvious to a learner, so you must discuss them. They are bullying, violence, racism, turning up to class intoxicated, or trying to smoke a cigarette, for example, in a lesson which I don't think anyone would do, but just gonna let you know. <laughs> so as we said before, these things are having respect for people as nobody deserves to have any of this when they're coming on a course. And those are things that I will make clear that I will not, be, not tolerate. I will discuss this when I discuss negotiable rules as well. For example, mobile phone use, that will be tolerated to a certain extent in my class. I will let all students know that if they are in a position where they need to use their phone, they are entitled to. For example, can you imagine being a mum and leaving your child with your husband and your child was sick before you had to come on your call? She'd be worried all day. So you'd want to be in contact with them so you know that you can concentrate properly. Knowing that, knowing that your child is being taken care of throughout the day, or someone may have an emergency where the same number keeps calling them all the time. So they might begin to worry 
and le need to leave the room to make a private phone call outside the classroom. Timekeeping can be negotiable. Asking an adult why they're late in a room full of people in a certain tone or voice ain't gonna, is not gonna go down well. Um, especially if their train was delayed by two hours or they broke and smashed their phone on the way to your lesson. I will ask my student quietly if everything was okay this morning and if there was a reason for lateness. If, I, if they snooze their alarm because they fancied another hour, I will gently remind my students that they're only here for a short period of time. So it's important that they get the best out of every minute that we spend together. Um, but ultimately the choice is up to them. And the final question <laughs> is, God, you well have to bear with me today, guys. I'm sorry. Explain why to engage. Oh, explain why. Explain ways to engage and motivate learners. I definitely need to go back to my functional skills. So I will engage and motivate learners by being organised and have written on the whiteboard the breakdown for the day. So people know when they've got a break coming up, they know when what time that they are gonna eat and what time we finish as well. I think it's important to engage with students by letting them know exactly what the plan for the day is. It makes people like feel better when they know that they've got like a milestone. I personally feel like that when I know that I've got a break coming up or I know that I can just make a phone call or I can work out in my head the time that I'm going to be home or something, especially if you was having people look after your children, it's handy. You don't have to ask, you can just message them and say I'll be home at this time. Sorry. <laughs> I will motivate my students with potential earnings and I will show them a chart of averages based on aesthetics earnings. I will look presentable, not like now, and use encouraging tactics like wearing the latest fashion and designer wear to show my students what they can have. I'll say positive things about how I don't even see my bills coming out as I always have more money coming in. And I will explain how profitable the business is and the industry and exactly how far they can go with the qualification. For example, they could start with a lip filler and Botox foundation course. And after six months, they would be able to go on to advanced dermal fillers and Botox. And if they're always updating themselves on the latest treatments, they will have the money to do so anyway, because the industry is so popular. And I will keep constantly keep reminding them as well, because a lot of people I find these days with popular things think there's already too many people doing it, but there's not, because how can there be with all the people that are in the world? You just, there's not enough people, so you can, build exactly what you want to. Don't let that get you, put you off. Um, and just lastly, to say that they can also go on to open in their own academy in just two years. And I am my own proof for them. So I can tell them exactly how I started, how I got to where I was today, what I had, what I had now, what encouraged me to get where I was um, and just give them a little brief knowledge of my background and my upbringing, not too much, but just to let them know, you know, that you can be anything you want to be if you put your mind to it. Um, that is the end of my presentation today and I've really enjoyed um, relaying everything that I've written. So I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you for listening. Right, Holly, how was that for you? How did you find that? I actually enjoyed it. When I was doing it at home, I kept tripping over all of my words and like when I was practicing, but when I like was saying it out loud, I, then I started to feel comfortable towards the end, yeah. which I was thinking at the time is good because then I will probably feel comfortable in a classroom mm -hmm. setting, mm -hmm. even though I felt nervous at the start because I was engaging with the audience that haven't seen me yet. <laughs>
Okay, so what, so what do you think that you did particularly well? What was the best thing that you did? Um, I think that, I think that I've covered quite a lot. Um, mostly everything, to be honest. Well, I'm, I'm going to say everything, obviously, because I, I did. Well, you did. You did. You did cover everything. <laughs> did I? Yes, you did. Oh, wow. Yeah. But we'll come on to that in a minute. Okay. So, you, so yeah. You everything. yeah. What What else did you do well? Um, I think I got to the point quickly, and I think um, that it was quite clear that my students are coming first. Mm. Okay. Um, anything you would improve next time? Um, I'll be honest with you, no, no. Nothing but, at all? Okay, maybe like, um, maybe I, I've, I might have explained too much in some areas and not enough in the others. Right. But maybe I just felt more confident answering that question. And I think I might have gave a couple of more examples than I needed to. I think maybe one was just enough, just to let Sarah know that I knew what I was talking about. But I got really into it when I was writing it, and I went for like, like three hundred. So <laughs> basically, no, I did do like two or three, and quite a bit. <laughs> um. Yeah, but you know, it, you're always better to go over rather than under. Yeah, always. exactly. Yeah. I'd rather see four examples of something than one. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and if Would you, you agree with that, though? Um, well, yes and no, really. Uh, well, let's let's have a look at the feedback. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Just for the purpose of the video, this is completely live. We haven't discussed it beforehand. <laughs> Polly made me a cup of tea in between, asked me to tell her what the outcome was, and I haven't done it. Oh, so we're going to find out now on the video whether Holly has passed or not. So we're all at the same point here. Um, so um, the first thing that I've done with oh, Holly, the first thing I've done with Holly is I've asked her how she felt that she got on. So I absolutely <laughs> recommend that if, as soon as you've done an assessment, ask the student how they got on, because I'm now going to use some of the things that Holly said to me there at the basis of my feedback. Actually, we've got some quite similar things down, but let's 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 talk through it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to tell you is that you have absolutely passed this assessment. Okay. Um, no doubt at all. Um, you have covered every single criterion as, as you as you said that you've done. So congratulations, you have passed. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm going to give you some more specific feedback now. I'm going to tell you about some of the things that you did really, really well. And yeah. some of the things that you could perhaps improve okay, on. Okay, cool. Uh, but I wanted to tell you that you passed now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when you tell your students... <laughs> When you tell the students that they've passed at the start, that means that Holly can now <laughs> relax into the feedback. She knows she's passed, so what I say to her, she can use to plan for her next assessment. Oh, jeez. So you have passed. Thank you. <laughs> so the reason that you've passed is because you've met all of the criteria. So you've met all of the criteria because of your planning. So I can see that you've clearly, I mean, I could see the, the PowerPoint and, and the, the screen, the, the camera couldn't see the PowerPoint, so that's fine, but I could see your notes, I could see that you've prepared. So you'd clearly prepared very well. Um, I'm just reading from my notes as well here, by the way. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, so you clearly prepared well for the presentation, and what you've done is you'd spent time separating your presentation into different sections. Yeah. So how did you do that? Did you, did you do it from... The book, or did you? What? How, no, how did you approach so, it? So I basically got the questions out. The shall I show them on video? Um, you don't need like to. Like an example, no. No, you don't need to. Okay, so you know the the question thing. Yes. And then we had like the boxes. I didn't really write in the boxes because I was like, um, writing around the pages. Yeah. So basically, I did it on Google Slides, and then I thought, let me create like the question and mm. the pictures, mm. and then when I was trying to text underneath it, it was it only allowing me to do a certain amount mm -hmm. so I had to do it as a new slide yeah. um unfortunately and that's why it that was another reason it probably went on a bit because I'm not familiar with google slide but I'm open to yeah. because I'll need to be yeah, yeah. like to get things like going because ideally I would have liked to have been like yeah. instead of like oh now this mm -hmm. now that like I didn't because if you think about it four minutes of that might have been gaps. Yeah, well, I, I think it's unlikely. I mean, you, you, your timing was very good. Oh, really? Um, but I'll show you some stuff on PowerPoint, make it a lot easier. Oh, um, yeah, please. Slides. Um, yeah, so, so, so that's how I prepped it. It was, it was good. It was, it was a really good approach. It was a sensible really? approach. Thank and you. it was, um, you know, it was... Um, 
what can I say, very organised. Yeah. So you know, you knew that you were going to hit everything. Like, that is not a surprise. You knew you had it. And yeah. actually the feedback that you just gave yourself was that you'd hit everything. And you knew you had. So yeah. that, that's great. Um, you've considered all the different needs of learners. So the things, you know, it's funny because I've actually written virtually the same as what you've just said to me. So the yeah. thing that really came across is that you are very learner-centred. You, you were learner-centred in all of your answers. I've said here that you're clearly worse, used to working with people. You know how to make relationships and look out for warning signs. Yeah. Uh, safeguarding. Um, it, that will obviously stand you in very good stead when you're teaching. You further demonstrated this when covering inclusive teaching and learning. Uh, you appear to have a particularly good grasp of learning styles, and, and you did seem to enjoy that stuff last week when we were covering it. Yeah, I know, I did, and, yeah. and that really came across in the presentation, so you talked about that in a lot of detail. I particularly liked when you discussed the things that learners might worry about, for example, childcare. Yeah. Um, uh, although what I would say um, is just, oh, and actually, this is not your fault at all, because we actually haven't covered this yet, so this is inequality oh, yeah. and okay. diversity, so we haven't actually got to that bit yet. Um, so we just be careful of your language. So um, consider using partner rather than husband. Okay. So you said you know you've left the baby with your husband. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I yeah I did think that as soon as I said that I did think that these things slip out, don't they? Yeah, because um, someone might be going through a divorce or something crazy and just think, or might just be a boyfriend, or actually they might have a baby with a woman. Yeah, but also exactly, they might not even be. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So let's that is so true. Let's include everybody. So, um, but actually, we haven't covered that section. Please yet. write that down for me because I, that is really such a like that is a massive good point. We're going to do a quality and diversity today. Okay, cool. So we haven't actually covered it yet. Oh, okay, that's probably why. But that I did something came over me when I said it. Right. Like, because that did I didn't write that down. Right. A lot of towards the end, I was getting really cosy. And then I was yeah, saying you, things well, through yeah, freestyling yeah, and yeah. all. <laughs> have you read this already then? Have you read <laughs> that? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really liked. Okay, so Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You talked through Maslow's hierarchy of needs confidently, but you didn't refer to the name of the theory. Now, you don't have to. No, I don't think so. But if you're using theory, oh, especially okay. if you're using theory in, in, you know, in the level of detail that you were, quote it. Yeah, cool. You know, you're oh, talking okay. about theory. So then people can go back and look on yeah. it, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I was trying to be a little bit too smart there then, maybe. Well, well I didn't do anything wrong, no. but I, what I was trying to do is um, link everything to everything. Well, that's what I've done. You did? In my writing, I did... I spoke about that, 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 mm. and exactly how it goes on the chart. Yeah. Um, well, and you, and you did it really, really well, but what I'm saying is, if you just mention the name, and actually, that's a nice bit of theory that's very, very easy to mention, and, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, when we're working at level three, we're talking about theory, so let's talk about it. Perfect. I really like the way that you covered functional skills. Now, functional skills isn't really a topic that many people love, but actually, you really made it work well for your... Yeah, industry. Industry, it worked really, really well. Um, really liked your ideas for icebreakers incorporating the topic of respect is ideal, brilliant, really like that. Um, you might want to, well, you know, when you're sending out all your pre course stuff, if you're yeah. going to ask them about their idea of respect, you might ask them to think about that before the session because imagine you've come to a yeah, new exactly, you might, you might be on the spot. Oh my god, I don't know what I don't even, I can't even remember what respect yeah, no. <laughs> so maybe just maybe just give them a bit of warning beforehand. But it's a great icebreaker, yeah. if they're prepared for it, it'll be even better. So you can say things like. In our first session, I will be asking you to tell me your name, where you come from, what you want to learn, or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, an example of either a time you've been respectful in the last week or a time that somebody has been respectful to you in the last yeah. week. And that, you give them a chance yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. And if they haven't been respectful, it gives them a chance to be respectful and then yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, your work on engagement and motivation was excellent. Your personal stories, really, really effective. Your students will love it. All yeah. the things you talked about, Yes, 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 yes. Talk about all of those things. Um, I think I said to you last week, you're probably going to be the biggest inspiration there for your students. They're coming to you and they basically will want to be like you. Yeah. So that's absolutely ideal. Okay, when you're teaching, and I've used the same terminology as you, that's why I said if you just read this. When you're teaching, it's always better to be freestyling. I mean, I'm literally reading from something I've written now to you, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's always better to freestyle. But, oh. that, will, <laughs> but that will come with time. So you made a script and that was sensible because these topics are new to you. So you did do the right thing by making a script. Um, and I did the same when I first started. I had a script for everything. Everything was a script. 
um, but in time, yeah, it, that will fade, yeah. and you'll be freestyling, yeah. and the nerves will subside. Yeah, um, when you're teaching your own subject because that's what you're passionate yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the best bits of your presentation were actually the bits where you were freestyling. So, oh, really? Yeah. So the bits like when you were talking about people smoking in the lessons, and you said they're obviously not going to do that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> let's talk about it anyway. Yeah. Well, actually, they do. When I've been teaching on Zoom, people have been there smoking away, but. Are you joking? No, I mean, it's a shame because you do talk about it beforehand, but even if you're on Zoom, you're supposed to kind of teach it as it treat it as if it's the real lesson. So it's a bit annoying. It's but really rude. It's a bit rude. Um, so it does happen, but it probably won't happen in your sessions. No, that really would be yeah, in my setting, but we're not talking about my industry. Uh, we, we were still, you know. Talking generally, but yeah. Um, okay, so don't worry if your laptop is slow. It does not matter, although when you get a Mac, it won't be, it'll be super quick. Oh, for but, sake. <laughs> but when you sake. When you're teaching. She should sell the Mac. I should, I should be Apple and yeah. Oh. So don't worry if your laptop is slow. When you're teaching, you can actually use a slow laptop as a chance just to have a breather. Yeah. Just take a breath. Yeah. And just, okay, they can see. I mean, we couldn't see because it wasn't projected, but they will be able to see because you'll have it projected. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It does not matter. They can wait. They can see it's working. You don't need to apologise. Because every time you apologise, it just draws attention to the fact that it's been slow. Yeah, exactly. No need. No need. So I'm really pleased to tell you that you passed. Thank I'm you. really pleased that you took the time to prepare in the way that you did. Yep. You pushed your own boundaries as well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so that's really, really good. Uh, you know, the boundaries in terms of your own comfort and also in terms of your skills. Because you've tried to use Google Slides for the first time. Yeah. And it's it's done it's 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 a good thing. It's done well for you. Yeah. And you've done well for it. So um, as far as I'm concerned, you've absolutely passed. I'm looking forward to micro teach. <laughs> Me too. And I'm looking forward to hearing you talking about topics that actually you do know and that you do. Yeah, know. of course. Yeah. Because actually, you know, there were some of these new ones here that actually they really did come across like you knew them and that you liked them. So if if it feels like that in this, imagine what it will feel like in your micro teach. Yeah. For sure. Um, how do you feel about that feedback? Yeah, I feel really good about that. I really do. I don't think anything negative was really negative. Do you no, know what I mean? It, it, it really wasn't. So and I, I agree with it. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement with you. Thank you. I'm definitely in agreement with you about the husband and partner thing. Right, we're going to come on to that today, and you'll 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 see you'll see what I mean. No, I do. Um, Right, I'm just checking for the purpose of the video that I've covered everything that I need to in terms of when people are doing their observations. So, um, I think I have. I've given you the feedback. Um, I've given you some points of improvement. Yeah. I've talked about how you can apply that to your micro teacher, which is one of the future assessments. Mm -hmm. I've given you some support. I've told you that you've passed. Yeah. Um, what I haven't done is I haven't... She's told me to get a Mac. I've told you to get that, so that's support for the future. Yeah, so um, <laughs> What I haven't done is I haven't gone through the code. So sometimes, um, I, mean, I could have said, so you have demonstrated um, A1.4, you've explained why it's important to identify and meet individual learning needs. Well, I haven't given you the codes because actually in the context of this, it's not going to make any difference to you to have the codes. I've got the codes here. What What is the code? Exactly. You don't even know what the codes are. No. Because... In this situation, I'm keeping Holly's evidence matrix sheet for her, so she's not doing that, I'm doing it. Um, and depending on how you're working with your own learners, it might be that they are keeping their own portfolios of evidence, or it might be that you are. If they're keeping their own portfolios of evidence, it is a good idea to tell them what number criteria they've met, because they will want to tick it off. Um, but if you're keeping it for them, oh, no I need. see, I see what you mean. Because it just makes it more complicated. Yeah. I so see, see what's right for you and your students. So, um, brilliant! Congratulations. Thank you. On to the next piece.